Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Esh and uh, the uh, members of the Center for Israeli Studies in uh, Vienna. I'm uh, a big fan of yours, um, a friend, I hope, and I'm very happy to be uh, invited to, uh, uh, to give a talk on what is actually, um, as I told um, Louise, it is, uh, it is a long romance uh, with, with uh, a dead person, with uh, Helma Lersky, but it is also a very much ongoing uh, uh, work in progress that um, I do in part. So please forgive me if I would be able to answer about only some parts and not all the others, uh, but I see more and more a line that I would like to share with you. So um, what I uh, call is Helma Lersky's Metamorphose for Wandlungen durch Licht, so a transformation through uh, light. It was uh, a photography or a photographic uh, portfolio um, of 147 um, images of 20 by almost uh, 18 um, centimeters um, done in the midst of 1936, so in the midst of the Arab Revolution. Um, he made it in Tel Aviv, then Tel Aviv as well, um, in mandatory Palestine. Within three months, he was ready to go with this. Um, he was very adamant about it, and he already, as you see in the title, which I'm trying, I, I tried, or uh, it, it happened that it was like that, that he tried to um, uh, uh, um, just uh, find some funding, and he presented some of the, uh, I would call, the glass negatives. So these are huge negatives. Imagine 20 by 80 uh, glass um, glass uh, uh, um, uh, plates taken by him physically to Jerusalem and then to Vienna. Already 1936, when the situation was very bad in Europe, trying to get some uh, some uh, um, uh, some uh, people to uh, help him. I don't think he got a lot went back to Israel and, uh, or to pre-state uh, uh, um, uh, um, Palestine. So that is in a nutshell what I'm going uh, uh, to talk about. As, as Professor Esch said, it was a very beautiful exhibition, very uh, large and informative exhibition called Faces about the uh, photography of the 1920s, some from photographers, some from uh, Austria, some from uh, Germany. Uh, however, I am um, just uh, going to talk about uh, Lersky's one uh, portfolio, which is the Metamorphose. Um, let me start with just showing you the images I'm talking about, 174 images of uh, one person um, um, a, a person who was work uh, was um, uh, without work at that time uh, from um, a, a Jewish uh, Swiss Jewish uh, person who just uh, happened to be in Tel Aviv at the time. Uh, and Lersky took um, 147 uh, uh, pictures of uh, this person on the rooftop. Uh, of uh, Lersky's apartment. As you can see, some parts, uh, he, he's sweaty, some parts he's very bright, some parts less. Um, just to, um, to explain it, um, he took, uh, he, he asked the person to sit on a rooftop and he took 16 mirrors, uh, large mirrors around him. And uh, the sun was of course very, very, uh, uh, strong and the mirrors also mirrored the sun. So you could imagine that it was a nightmare, but that's also the reason why we see the spots later on. He worked on the uh, on the images and uh, of course uh, retouched some parts so and enlarged the, the faces and we see different images like 
uh, these uh, that we see. Um, let me just leave this in, uh, uh, for a moment and um, talk a bit about Lersky's interesting uh, background. He was born in then German Strasbourg, uh, 1871. It was annexed by uh, Bismarck, so he was uh, uh, a German citizen. Uh, at the age of um, 22 in 1893, he moved uh, he moves to New York City, deciding to become an actor and acting there uh, with a German uh, uh, speaking troupe there, then in Chicago uh, and Milwaukee. He stays there and he spends uh, many years there. For one year, he lives for Austin, Texas, where he teaches as a professor for German uh, studies, literature, then comes back continues his, um, his artistic uh, journey. At the age of 40, he just started uh, paying attention to uh, the camera um, through his first wife. And um, a beautiful anecdote uh, is that his wife uh, told him that the best way to, to take pictures is in, in, uh, in a room with a spot and told her, no, the, way, the best way is to go outside and to see what the sun is doing. So from the first moment, that was his, um, his inclination to use the sun and he never used the flesh. And that is uh, why, um, first of all, he would call it Verwandlungen uh, durchlicht because that's, very much was the what he has been doing with his own camera all his life, not just in uh, pre-state uh, Israel. Um, in 1915, during the First World War, he decided as German citizen to emigrate to Berlin. I have no idea how a person decides to live during the war into the war, into a um, into state of war, and to stay there. Uh, there are some some theories that he was already very famous, and he thought it would get more famous, and so, we don't know. Anyway, he stays in Berlin, and in a couple of years, he, be, he would become um, very well known cameraman. Um, at the Ufa Fabrik. So in Berlin, the where the um, where the um, film industry, the Hollywood of Berlin, he um, he's, uh, he's, he becomes he he becomes uh, a name. He makes a name for himself, and he starts working with all the big uh, uh, um, names, uh, if you will. Uh, I would say Fritz Lang uh, Metropolis, he's one of the cameramen there, and also um, special, uh, special effects. Um, he's also working with uh, um, Paul Lenny, and just name it, uh, many, many years, uh, many others as cameramen, uh, including being a cameraman and taking photos of Lenny Riefenstahl. He is, um, he is, he's very social, so he also uh, is doing um, his best uh, to stay um, uh, um, focused and um, he works a lot with um, people in this um, uh, film industry, but I would like to talk more, all, more about his inclination to work or to refer to literature. And let me take it uh, in, uh, in both parallel uh, ways to, uh, to see what happens. So he always stays a cameraman and uh, a photographer, but um, he, in his heart, is an artist. He's also um, uh, intellectual. He socialized with them. And um, we, um, and my my uh, thesis is that he takes a lot from literature and use it in his uh, photography. Today, I would like to speak about very few images here. One of them is on the right, as you see, 
we see an image of someone who seems to be strong, uh, strong-minded, uh, decided. Uh, we see him, um, and we would see most of the 147 images here or photos uh, in this collection. We would see from uh, a lower point of view, that means that uh, the figure himself is uh, in a, some kind of advantage uh, point of view because he's uh, higher. We see it already. This is almost a direct, uh, um, direct line, but still when we see uh, this uh, very strong uh, cut, uh, a beautiful um, um, lower jaw and the, the um, neck, we can see that we are lower than him. Our eyes are not parallel to his. Um, here we see um, an image of maybe a nun. We're not sure, but it looks like. Here another one, maybe of a shed. Sheikh, the Sheikh, the Arab strong figure. We don't know who this one is. And we can see more and more and more and more of these. Uh, you, one could see a lot of them in the, um, in the, in the exhibition. If it reminds you or somehow um, you, you thought about other images of strong men that, uh, the, uh, that, that our point of view is lower than them. I would say that one can see a lot of these images uh, during the 20s and the 30s, especially in Germany, also in uh, Austria, um, the image of the strong men um, based on, I would say here, I just brought a, an example of a Karl a Albiker, who was uh, a sculptor loved by uh, or promoted by the Nazi, uh, the Nazis uh, in, in Germany. This is uh, near the Olympian uh, Stadium. Um, sorry. Um, if if uh, you want to think about others, you could think about uh, Bolshevik or Russian uh, imagery, um, any totalitarian uh, or, or uh, um, fascist imagery that we've seen. Uh, in Italy at the time, we're talking about strong men, and that is what uh, that is what Lersky saw around him. Um, I would um, just let me skip this one for a moment and talk about this one. We also saw in the uh, exhibition uh, these two images: the image of Lersky metamorphosis on the left hand side, again from a lower. Uh, point of view, our lower point of view looks very strong, very spiritual. Uh, look at the uh, yeah, the uh, prop that, that he, uh, Lersky just gave him. And on the right, we also saw this one, a beautiful uh, photo by Erich uh, Retzlaff, German photographer, uh, worker with bits of uh, sweat on his face. Um, if you look, it's very difficult to enlarge this one, let me uh, try, I'm not so sure it would be, and if not, there are others that you could be, be you could see bits of uh, a haircut and, and sometimes sweat that of course, uh, um, Lersky corresponds here artistically with Ra uh, Ratzlev. Now, just to explain that Ratzlev uh, was later on a Nazi member. So uh, what I'm trying to say that these were the images that were around Lersky and the zeitgeist of the of, of the of the era. So it was not um, it was not just meant politically. It was also images that he saw and couldn't uh, just just ignore all of them. Um, let me go back to to what I wanted to show you, and then uh, so. This is from an image point of view. However, as you remember, the uh, Lersky who taught German, who was a German actor uh, um, on German stage for 22 years in, a, in a, sorry, for 17 years in the States, we cannot ignore that he, he, knew, um, he knew literature. And he, 
actually calls the metamorphosis, he calls it metamorphose uh, as, as a name of, uh, of a portfolio. Of course, we cannot um, uh, ignore that metamorphose reminds us of two metamorphoses. The first one is, of course, Ovid's uh, metamorphosis based on <clears throat> um, the myth uh, um, from, from, from Greek myth to Roman myth and Ovid uh, uh, made it into, uh, uh, into art of its own. The story of the metamorphosis of um, the circle of transform or transformation from life to death. Here I just uh, picked up uh, one beautiful uh, uh, painting that I love very much by John Waterhouse, a pre Raphaelite that, uh, of Echo of Nakisus by Ovidio. So we all know Na Narcissus uh, um, decided, or he doesn't want to fall in love with any woman around him, including uh, Echo, who is looking at him uh, eagerly, but he falls in love with his own uh, image and uh, eventually. Um, his, his image becomes an, uh, a flower that, that grows from water. So actually life is not, uh, is not cannot be bloomed um, from, from the person itself. So there is a, a very pessimistic uh, way of uh, 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 circle. So from life to death. Um, when we look at the, um, back to, we are back to the, um, uh, title, we see that uh, the metamorphose um, uh, is called um, metamorphose and verwandlung. And then Dolchliach. When we look at the metamorphose, we of course think Ovid first, and then the verwandlung, and or of course uh, is uh, by, by uh, verwandlung by, by uh, Franz Kafka, uh, 1915. Uh, published. Um, um, impossible not to know the Verwandlung um, for, for Lersky, um, especially later on he's befriended with, uh, with uh, Broad, a uh, mentor and friend of, uh, of, uh, of Kafka. And as you know, with the Verwandlung, um, what, what Kafka tells us is that a person through such misery, uh, his life uh, just ended as, as a cockroach. So um, the, the cycle is death and it's, uh, it's death of, of will, death of uh, wishes, death of strength. Um, and it's, it's very uh, much the, uh, the, the, the story that, end, that the death ends a uh, life of a young person, as much as we see before that by Ovidius. And here just, I, I took uh, the metamorphose and by Ovidius, uh, uh, the frontispiece uh, from 17th century. Um, and um, let me uh, go back. And this is just to underline the imagery as well as the literary uh, reference. Now, um, we don't have a lot of time and I want to keep uh, a time for, for questions. Of course, when we say the Verwandlung, uh, we think about uh, Verwandlung again that we can see all over Europe from, uh, if, if I mention meta, uh, 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 the Metropolis um, in which uh, the film in which uh, Lersky um, worked uh, as, as well for, and uh, with, with Fritz Lang, it is a story about, uh, about metamorphosis. It's about, uh, uh, it's about uh, a, a machine that, that uh, about life and machine, life and machinery, um, the, the cycle of uh, life and uh, becoming the, the new uh, machinery. We can talk about uh, the um, uh, Wandlungen of, of a, emigration of the time. We, we can talk about uh, uh, theater pieces that, that the Verwandlung or Wandlungen uh, are, 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 are actually the, the theme of the, the, the piece there. We can talk about uh, um, um, 
a variety that, that I don't think it's right now at the time to mention, but what I'm trying to show that this is the Verwandlung, Wandlung and, and, and metamorphosis is something that I wouldn't call uh, just a title of a project that perceived later on but by, by Lersky himself as the most important project of his life. Um, so I would say that the, uh, the title here was very important. He never explained it, but he said it was the most important title of his life. What he explained about the, um, the metamorphosis, and I would uh, give time for talks now, he said that actually he took one person that he believed had a non-distinct uh, uh, facial expression, and he um, decided to um, uh, photo, uh, to photograph him for many times because he believed that there is, he said it, that he believed he could um, educate people um, to understand that there is, there was an ultip, he called it. So um, um, there was an archetype of someone and from this uh from this stem many many branches like a tree would follow and each one would be different and they would all be similar my uh conclusion and concluding comments would be that um being in is being in pre-state israel um, staying in a, um, in a place where uh, the midst of uh, uh, Arab revolt, one year after many German Jews come after the um, Nuremberg um, uh, laws, race laws, and, and uh, seeing all of it, um, and talking about an OTIP and that the OTIP is not more important than the branches and the branches come all from the same place. He himself, an immigrant and also um, a refugee, if I may, I would say, and, 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 and believing he, believe, the, believing that, that this was his best and most important uh, um, uh, work, by the way, wanting Einstein to, to uh, sign uh, the um, introduction, um, talking about uh, uh, his, his, uh, his um, uh, work, but Einstein couldn't do it. He promised, but he didn't do it. Uh, I believe, and I would like to, um, to summarize it, that this is his Zionist, uh, um, Zionist ideology, to live in peace, to be um, to be all um, uh, similar, and that maybe the nun, maybe the sheikh there, uh, maybe the soldier or the farmer, all of them together, all the Abrahamic uh, um, uh, families would be uh, together and would uh, uh, live peacefully near each other. After all, we are all from the same. Uh, stem. Thank you very much. I would like to, to give time for questions and open uh, a, a bit of a discussion. Thank you, Anad. <clears throat> I, might, I should make a remark about procedure before we continue. If you have a question, uh, please put it in the chat. I think that I can see it here. And then I can either read it or have you read it. But um, the best way to do this is to use the chat function. I think this works best. Um, and if we all agree to use the same procedure, then we have a chance of actually uh, doing this in an organized manner. While I'm waiting for the first question to come from there, our audience, I have a question for you, Anat, about your concept of metamorphosis, because um, I think this is fascinating. Um, uh, as I th you surely know, Ovid's metamorphosis is about creatures or I guess living beings that change their form from within themselves, you might say. Whereas Lersky's is not that. 
uh, I, it would appear. It would appear that he is making, uh, creating the appearance of a change that comes from the person or the object, in this case, the human being being photographed, but is in reality being created by the photographer. What, how would you, would you agree with that? It's a wonderful question and a comment. Uh, Les, I, I agree completely. Leski always said that he, he came from, or he came after, or he he was almost at the uh, at the end of the uh, new objectivity, what what was called the photography of the time, the imagery of the time, and he actually did the opposite. He said, as opposed to, and I just uh, didn't show you, but. I knew that uh, it would come. For example, August Zander, um, one of the gorgeous, really wonderful photographer, uh, photographers uh, of the new objectivity, um, here in Face of the Time in 1920 from Weimar, he decided to uh, that that or oh, uh, part of the uh, part of the. Um, I believe base for, for race, racial uh, perception was that um, you look like what you do. If you are a baker, you look like a baker on the left. If you are a, a, if you are brick layer, lay, um, layer, you will look like the one on the right. You need to be strong, you need to be um, you need to be a boy who can do it, but the, the baker, for example, that's amazing how he decided to take those images and to believe that actually uh, their, their, their ob objective look is the way, uh, who they are. Um, so the look is the person. Uh, Lersky decided to do the opposite. He took a lot of, uh, he took pictures uh, of beggars from the streets and, and the beggars look like uh, um, very similar to the, uh, uh, to the figure of the metamorphosis to the uh, um, uh, Verklos or, or who, who he took place. So Lasky said the opposite. He said, I am the one who decide and I, my spirit or the camera spirit or the actually the, the, the light changes uh, the person. And, the person could be anyone, uh, and there is no um, no expression that one cannot do from inside or from my inside. It's my idea uh, to uh, to change it, um, which was um, very very uh, different from what was uh, done around him. Um, and I think you're right. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I think I haven't, I, I would follow up, but I think we, I'd rather wait and because there is a question in the chat from um, Thomas Vetter. Uh -huh. Thomas, I hope you uh, will let me read it because it's just simpler that way. Um, you mentioned that in 1915, Lersky moves to Berlin and you wonder why someone would do that during time of war. But did we not see waves of immigration into Palestine, later Israel, in times of war there? What is the difference? Um, what makes them different? Um, thank you, Thomas. Um, uh, um, I would say that Israel was all, Israel is always in war. So I wouldn't uh, uh, dare to compare. Um, and mostly people immigrate to Israel out of necessity. They're refugees mostly. Very few people would, uh, would immigrate to Israel just, uh, just because it's so nice in their own country and they move to another country that is very difficult to live uh, in. Um, Lersky, um, we don't know what, what happened, but he chose to move to a very clear situation of world war place that that um that that he would be part of it i don't know i don't know um and I, but i don't think it's so obvious but thank you so much thomas 
<clears throat> I'm waiting for questions uh, from the audience. If there are none as yet, I will, while someone is thinking about what a, a question to ask, I will follow up on our previous discussion uh, by asking you about, shall we say, the relationship between the perceiver, that is the person viewing the image uh, and the image. You were, your, your answer to my earlier question was a thesis about, what the, about the photographer's view of what was going on. Uh, in the case of August Sander, the thesis was uh, that uh, people look like their professions, as you said. Um, it's a little bit like the, the amusing uh, argument that some people say that, um, that dog owners start to look like their dogs <laughs> <laughs> after, if they've uh, hold on to them long enough. Um, I don't know if Sandra would have agreed to that comparison, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> I would like to suggest that uh, this is this is something that's happening at the level of there's the two things that are happening. One is phenomenology, that would be Lewski, uh, structuring images by changing, shall we say, the the lighting conditions, the stimulus conditions, and um, working at the phenomenological level uh, to restructure appearance. Whereas Sander doesn't do that, he he has somebody, he's or he's arranged the lighting all right, but he doesn't change it. Uh, he's create wanting to create a, a topological image uh, that is supposed to be static once it is in place. Um, so the they are they are trying to each of them to excite a particular kind of uh, per perception in the in the viewer. Uh, but it's only a theory about what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that or not. I have two more, two questions in the chat. So if you want to ask, answer me, fine. But if not, we can move on. Um, I agree that these are all static. Um, and with uh, Lesk, it's, uh, it's beautiful what you say, because he was also very interested in theater and in... Um, and in movement, he um, there were um, the um, Orange Orangestein uh, twins. They were dancers, and he um, took great uh, photos of them um, later on. And theater, he worked a lot with theater. He loved it as an actor, but also as uh, as um, cameraman. Um, and I agree, the, this was always uh, in the move. Uh, about uh, the reception, you also talked about reception, how the other people saw him. There is a lot of uh, misconception of uh, uh, Lersky. First of all, he's, um, he's overlooked, definitely the metamorphosis. Uh, um, there were a lot of um, uh, um, critics uh, that, took, uh, that talked about his uh, um, movies. Um, uh, in Israel, in uh, in uh, the the silent movies in Berlin, when he entered, when he ent uh, when he moved to Berlin in the in the nineteen twenties, um, especially. But uh, till now, he's overlooked the so perception uh, um, in regard with his or reception. I would say that we still have a lot to do. Thank you very much, uh, Louise Hecht. As it says that she would like to ask a question, please unmute yourself. Yes. Um, thank you, Annette, for this wonderful talk and for bringing Helma Lerski to the fore. I'm a big fan of his. And you're right, he's not he hasn't received the proper um, attention until now. Um, my, what, what I found very interesting in your interpretation of metamorphosis was the negative or pessimistic aspects you you emphasized uh, in the concept uh, because for me these people uh, who Lersky portrayed um, and also the the image in general of the strong men the the muscle chew 
um, is a is a an image which actually radiates optimism and not pessimism. So how how did how did you get to this interpretation? I find it very I find it fascinating. Wonderful, thank you. So maybe Louise, you actually um, uh, 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 underline the 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 essence of what Lersky is doing here. He is doing it the midst of death around him. German Jews uh, emigrate um, during these years. Um, Arab revolts uh, uh, around him. Um, he was he was uh, he was. He was, uh, I would say, um, requested to live as soon as he can because, so death is all around, he knows it. Um, and in spite of it, he, he talks about the image uh, as the rebirth of the sun, under the sun. Later on, he would, um, he would also use it in, uh, in pre-state in Israel, in, in beautiful um, uh, other images of Arabs and Jews um, or Jews who look like Arabs. So it's all about uh, bringing life. And that is uh, also what I found fascinating in the, in the, uh, in the uh, title that he chose, the metamorphosis first. So we refer to what he knows as uh, either very pessimistic uh, metamorphosis if it's Ovid or if it's, uh, if it's uh, Kafka. And of course, the Verwandlung game that we see in theater, we see uh, in the Metropolis, all of them talk about um, negative, uh, negative um, journey in life. No wonder during the First World uh, War and then Second World War. And he decides to do something else. And that's what I see so beautiful. The, positive aspect uh, that he creates and he says it comes from the sun, from life. And he sees it, in, he shows it in other uh, images uh, in his, uh, um, uh, especially cinema and photography, we can talk about, if we can talk about, uh, we can talk about, uh, um, today I talked with uh, Dina and thank you Dina, um, about uh, Adama, um, uh, sorry, about Avoda, the film that was also presented, uh, or, or uh, uh, just a um, footage in the exhibition. And there, there is the image of water coming out, um, just flooding the very dry um, earth or uh, soil in, in, in Israel. So we talk about hope, we talk about life, we talk about immigration, we talk about immigration to new uh, place, we talk about the strong Jew. Uh, it's, it's all about the new life, the new strength, the new positive images of uh, imagery of, of uh, hope for everyone. Um, Thank you. Amnon Lechter asks, First of all, uh, what was Lersky's relation to Anna Biermann? And then adds whether, and ask also whether he was involved in M, the film M by Fritz Lang. Um, I don't know about, thank you, Amnon. I don't know about M. I cannot answer. And I don't know if he had any relations to Anna Biermann. Anna Biermann was. Uh, presented in the exhibition, but uh, maybe Dina knows more about it. I'm not so sure whether he knew her. I don't remember when uh, she was, uh, but but uh, I can, um, I I just need to ask uh, Dina not to be uh, sure. And about M, I don't know. I, it's a beautiful uh, question. I would check. Thank you. Um, can I? Yes, please, Tina. I just uh, want to answer this immediately because um, actually um, I know a little bit about Anna Biermann because uh, the grandson of Anna Biermann is a very, very good friend of us living in Vienna and I know the family a bit. And there's the similarity is that uh, as much as Lelsky and Anna Biermann both were very much unknown until today, but it starts now that they get a platform, that they 
are presented, that they become visible. There's a huge exhibition now about Anna Biermann's photography in Tel Aviv, and there's a museum in Essen that they have a lot of Anna Biermann's photographs. I would say that the background is completely different and I'm not sure, I do not believe that they were in contact. Anna Biermann's background was, uh, she comes from a very wealthy family. She died before the war and uh, she wanted to, um, it was a kind of emancipation of her seeing the world, her aesthetics. And it was a lot about her, her her uh, photography relates to a lot of uh, images. You could say it's the Stillleben, the, the, the aesthetics of um, everyday used uh, ob objects. And she took a lot of pictures of her children that eventually I got to know also the son of Anne Bielman that he passed away a couple of years ago. But um, so I would say the message and the background is different. However, the, the result of the work is similar because it's a lot about aesthetics and it's a lot about the being a pioneer and uh, Anna Biermann also being a woman creates a different view on uh, the objective that she took pictures of. But I wouldn't say it, that it was just a hobby for her, but I would, I would say she expressed herself as a woman through her pictures, through her photography. Uh, thank you very Thanks. much for adding that information. Uh, Thomas Wetter adds a new question now. Uh, is there any indication that photographers faked their images in those times. If you look at the bricklayer of Augusanda, he seems to have 50 to 80 kilos on his shoulders and looks like he's just walking to a party. So, so thank you. Um, they, I wouldn't call it fake, but they retouched it. I know that uh, um, Lesky himself retouched the faces of the uh, of the um, of the model, and he did it on purpose. He 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 erased what he didn't want, uh, and he underlined what was important for him. Yes, so they retouched. Uh, they couldn't. I, I I don't think that the person there uh, could uh, um, add uh, some bricks, uh, but uh, that I would say it's more Photoshop and and. Uh, our modern time, but uh, probably they did it uh, for short time. Um, if, but but definitely Lersky did it in his uh, work. Definitely, uh, I mean, retouching the the photography after. I would just add that um, the brick bricklayers, the uh, young uh, bricklayers, carried that those heavy loads quite routinely, uh, and if you have are familiar with the documentary film, film images of uh, African women who carry enormous amounts of water on their heads, uh, then you can see that the human body seems to be quite capable of handling loads that we wouldn't imagine that it could. Um, part of it, of course, has simply to do with learning. Uh, if you're a culture, if, if it's part of your culture to do that or part of your job to do that, you learn how to do it especially if you're young enough and you're not starting to be a bricklayer at the age of 60, um, you might even have a chance at being able to carry such a load. Thank you, yeah. I have another question in the chat. Uh, it just says Center for Israel Studies Vienna on everyone. Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> that's Dina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I just wanted to look at, at uh, Helma Lersky as a Zionist, would you say that he represents the cultural Zionism? Sorry? And it, would you say that he represents this kind of cultural Zionism? Or um, how, would you, how would you see him as a Zionist? 
Um, I would uh, say that uh, definitely his Zionist, uh, a pro first of all, we are not sure why he moved to Israel. Uh, we know we knew that he couldn't uh, find work anymore in 32, 33, but he also uh, came to visit uh, Palestine uh, in 1931, uh, probably both uh, interest and in, in, uh, out of uh, work in Europe. And there was a Zionist uh, approach. I would say that I know that he, um, that he met uh, with Einstein in some Zionist um, uh, clubs. He met others also um, uh, traveling from place to place, uh, um, discussing uh, material. I don't know how much he really was active there, but uh, he definitely um, was I, an idealist, uh, ideologist, and um, he, he was very, very interested in the Arab, uh, uh, Jewish, uh, uh, Christian um, um, uh, groups there who, who lived then in the, in the 30s in uh, um, mand uh, mandatory Palestine. And I do believe that this is a call for, for uh, um, living together. I definitely believe so. He never said that this, project meant to be a Zionist project, but also the fact that he wanted Einstein to sign it and to talk about it um, underlines very much the, uh, um, the association he had with this uh, um, uh, person. He also, during his time in Israel, worked or, or financed himself uh, through um, filming uh, eight documentaries for uh, the um, Jewish National Fund and Histadrut and others. And these were, as they called, very propaganda um, uh, film. Uh, the the, the uh, metamorphosis is definitely uh, not a propaganda and it was never paid. Therefore, it was only published posthumously. He couldn't publish it, even though it was his uh, most important uh, um, uh, project and I asked myself it's all about images it's all about um, it's all about symbols here he never explained that this would be his Zionist the most important element but I believe that because of all what I said that was uh, uh, an important aspect of him especially when he talked to uh, Krakauer later on and he said that this was the most important project that he made and he believed that it could educate people to live peacefully with each other so that's my answer i hope uh, it can uh, ring the bell that's that's what i can say so i would definitely call it cultural uh, zionism um because it's, it, it it talked about uh, uh um just uh, living together in peace louise hecht asks if he was a member of Brit Shalom. I don't know. Good question. Best to, to, better to, to find out. Thank you. Are there other questions? We have time. Um. I have one more question, and this relates to the to the movies that we also saw one in the exhibition. Um, he he portrayed someone, a Holocaust survivor, in one of the youth villages in um, in forty eight, and. Um, it was, as I understood, it was um, a film about a young boy coming to Israel as a survivor. And um, he showed him as a symbol of the victim that he comes to Israel or to mandatory Palestine and to um, show that nevertheless, the strength of this 
person of this boy. Can you say something about this? Yeah, um, it's a, it's it's amazing, and and just to think about it that he he really decided to relate to those people who had some kind of uh, difficulties in their lives. So the boy, yeah, uh, was a Holocaust survivor, a real Holocaust survivor, and and he. Uh, went to to uh, film him. He also uh, filmed uh, or took pictures of this person who was um, who was uh, without work and later on went back to us uh, to Europe. Um, I think that shows something. He 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 really cared about what happened, and I think that from that point of view, uh, his um, his work is political of course, very artistic. And that's why um, the movies didn't work because uh, he was paid to, to do something easier to grasp and, and, and better to understand. And it was uh, very unpopular because it was so artistic. But uh, from, from, the, uh, um, from the nitty gritty work that he, he's done that we know, we see that he actually politically cared very much. And I believe it was also a statement. Yeah. Ben Shemin, yeah, the, the, definitely. And, and um, he also made the movie later on, Children of the Sun, um, of a lot of uh, children of kibbutzes. And there again, the children are very blonde and they um, um, moved uh, poor kids. They were put into the sun in their trade. Uh, the mothers went uh, and the nurses were uh, just uh, far and the kids cannot stand it. And they just, uh, just uh, cry, but they're in the sun and they're very sunny. They have uh, a blonde hair. So it's all about new life, new beginning apropos the positive part of the metamorphosis, without forgetting the, uh, the side where they come from, like, like Adama, so the new, the boy, the Holocaust uh, survivor who was, uh, who was um, participating in the movie as, as an actor, and as a, it's a documentary. Yeah, so both sides, politically and artistically, there is a uh, uh, there is uh, th there is a lesson here, and artistically, there is hope. Thank you very much. That's a very nice final sentence, I think. Um, in times like these, um, D D Dina, could you perhaps tell us when our next presentation is, so that everyone is alerted to that? Yes. Thank you, Mitch. So I. Um... I would like to invite you for our next lecture it will take place on the 25th of November. And we are tackling something completely different. Um, Professor Sarah Abu Rabia Keder, a Bedouin woman. She's eventually one of the first academics from the Bedouin community in Israel. She is a professor at the Ben Gurion University will talk about the challenges of diversity in Israeli higher educational institutes. And um, what she's gonna present is she will address the challenges of diversity in Israeli universities from the perspective of minority groups. It will present the gaps and obstacles that minority students face such as economic, social, and political within the academic Israeli context. And I would be happy to see you all there because um, I think this is a very important lecture and um, we are very happy that we will have Professor Sarab Abu Rabia Kader as our guest speaker. Thank you very much. And thank you, Anat, again, as you may have seen, uh, our audience has already sent its thanks as well. Uh, 
thank you very much. It's uh, been a pleasure. And uh, I think we've started the season quite nicely with your help. Thank you very, very much, all of you. Thank you for inviting me to give the talk. And um, I'm, I'm eager to, uh, to hear the next talk of Professor Abu Rabia. I actually know her, she was a colleague. So it will be very interesting to, uh, to hear and, to, and hopefully uh, to see her. And uh, thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Anat. Coming. Right. Being our lecturer. Thank you. Okay. So, Lila Tov. Thank you. Lila Tov. Thank you bye. so much. Bye bye.